and peace be upon Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, his family, his companion, and all of those who follow his footsteps till the hereafter. We ask Allah for forgiveness. We seek refuge in Allah from the evils of our action. It's a verse unto the hellfire. The best word is the word of Allah, and the best teaching is the teaching of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Today, inshallah, we are going to listen to um, your uh, thoughts and reflection um, upon the story of sacrifice between uh, Prophet Ibrahim alayhi salam and his son Ismail. Um, these are the days of sacrifice. Many people Many people around the world, they share the uh, pilgrimage, they share pilgrims, and they do sacrifice, even if they don't go to the Hajj. So, this has been practiced for over 1400 years ago. But do we really understand that um, what should bring happiness to your heart is not when you slaughter a lamb uh, or a cow, the udhiyah, the dabiha. But when you slaughter what is attached to your heart, again, what should bring happiness to your heart is not when you gather with your family and you slaughter a lamb, a cow, the udhiyah. But when you slaughter what is attached to your heart, what prevents you from moving forward to Allah Taala, and this is the lesson that we should gain. Um, so, inshallah, Sister Layla will lead the uh, discussion. And I will be around to give our comments. And also, me and Sister Layla would help you, inshallah. So, everybody is encouraged to come forward and to speak from their experience, to speak from what is around them. Um, and also to think about, oh, I shall slaughter this from my heart. I shall remove all of this from my heart in order to move forward, in order to perform my prayer in a proper way. When I stand before Allah, I feel that there is barriers between me and Allah. And these barriers, maybe this sense mistakes, this something that is attached to my heart, uh, this, uh, you know, wrong love, uh, devil something inside my heart so I have to decide during these days to slaughter to remove to cleanse my heart from everything and empty my heart from everything but Allah empty our heart from everything but Allah and this is Tawheed so Sister Layla you may start inshallah yes alhamdulillah this is a good topic and I want you guys to really think about it because we've been speaking so much about the prayer you know how the prayer is a convert when you pray and recite that fatiha you're recording having, in progress you're having a, a conversation with the law and a lot of people have issues that they have to free their hearts of before they pray for example maybe you've had an argument with your spouse you have to let that go so you can concentrate and focus on what you're saying and talk to Allah. Maybe the children are stressing you out. You have to free your heart from all of that. Maybe you're, the job is expecting you to do something. So, you know, when it comes to our prayers, we have to make sacrifices. And then in our personal lives, we sacrifice every day. So who's going to start us off uh, speaking about what are some of the personal sacrifices that you make for Allah? in your personal life, in your prayers, or whatever. Who would like to start us off, please? I'll start. I don't really know what y'all talking about, but I'm going to do it like this. Every Wednesday, 
I sacrificed my time, my everything for a lot to feed this community out here in Fresno. We feed over 200 people every, every Wednesday, the, except for the uh, third Wednesday of every month that Allah give us breath, rain, shine, or earthquakes. I'm out there in that rain, in that heat. It's 108. I'm out there regardless doing it. That's the sacrifice that I've made for my God. And that's all I got to say. Alhamdulillah. And that's a big sacrifice, especially considering, you know, the age, you know, and this is a sacrifice for any woman to give up her time and spend every day, uh, one day out of every week in the heat, you know, providing food, you know, for the, for the homeless. You know, this is a great sacrifice for the sake of Allah. And you're not getting paid no money for it. You're doing it. Fisa bill Allah. So, mashallah, that's a great example, Dr. Asim. Yeah, you're, you're right. And uh, we uh, uh, last time we spoke about the uh, the worship that we offer, like uh, offering your prayer, fasting, charity, zakah, um, and you go for hajj. So all of these, all the, the, the worship that we offer teach people how to sacrifice and how to raise the notion of sacrifice. Salah, prayers, you take out of your time. A charity, you take out of your money, and this is what Sister Amina mentioned. So she take out of her time and uh, uh, being dedicated to prepare something for the need, for the need. Jazakallah khairan. So may we have the next one? Yes, alhamdulillah, Sister um, Jamila. Yes, this topic um, brings a lot of thoughts to my mind. Um, I have learned a lot about the story of Prophet Abraham, who survives be upon him, his life, hardship, and many sacrifices he made. I think about how he refused his father and made who made idols and his occupation for the people was to buy and worship these things and how his father and the people was so cruel to him just because the prophet knew that these idols <clears throat> could not give life or death. They tried to end his life by throwing him into a flaming fire. Afterwards, he, he left that land and he moved to another land. The prophet's story reminds me of all the many sacrifices I grew up doing in my life by helping to raise my siblings. And that refers, referred with my, that interfered with my education. Today, they act like they don't even know me. Another loss in my life after leaving home was because of abuse and threats on my life. So I had to live with other relatives who act like they really cared about me, my well being. That was no piece of cake. I had to work hard <clears throat> like a slave to help pay their bills. Once they had, once they made a statement of, about me and said, you got to eat and you got to eat and pay for your room and board. So I worked two different jobs and dealt with school. I felt like I didn't learn anything. These things did not let me, okay. These people did not let me spend my money. They issued out nickels and dimes to me. Yet I tried to remove many of these things from my heart. This is what I pray to a lot is to help me with that. The next chapter is my, in my life. That was a sacrifice. I got married for a time and that ended up in divorce, discomfort and disappointment. I began to ask God for help, guidance and direction in my life. During those hard days, 
I knew I had to support myself because I was like in job skills. So I worked and went to school for training to get a better up to get better opportunities to better myself. My only pastime was I used to love to sing and write gospel songs about Jesus and God, but I always knew something was missing. Later on, I tried marriage again. At this point, I took my Shahada and married a Muslim man. And that didn't last but a few years. That became a shock and a great disappointment and very painful to my mind and heart. But I didn't know much about Islam. Being divorced out of that marriage, I never lost my hope in Allah. I did my best to keep my prayers the best I could. I tried my best to hold on to that marriage, but I almost lost my sanity. I was homeless for a while. I didn't, I did my best by praying and holding onto the rope of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the best I could. So I migrated to seek more about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There are many other stories how I had to make sacrifice in my life. Yes, I felt like I was thrown into a burning, a, a flame of fire. And now I always ask Allah, I cry out to him and I say, please be my friend because I know he won't fail me. I know he won't leave me alone. Today, Prophet Ab Abraham's story to me He's a role model to me. Thank you. Alhamdulillah, mashallah, that's just wonderful. And, you know, this is the beauty, you know, of uh, Islam. And a lot of people ask the question, why is it that Allah, uh, one third of the Quran is history, it's the stories of what, what happened in the past. Because from listening to the stories and struggles of the prophets, and you see that their struggles were greater than ours similar to ours, but even more severe. It gives us the encouragement. It gives us the motivation, you know, to handle our trials with dignity without transgressing the limits of Allah. It, it encourages us to handle our trials with balance. Uh, like she said, her whole life can be a book, you know, chapter one, her childhood, you know, how she raised her siblings, and how to this day, now that she's older, none of them are there for her. That's a hurtful thing right there. But I, but she sacrificed her childhood to be a mother, you know, to help take care of them. And now that she's in need of help, there's no one here for her. But that's okay. She did it for the sake of Allah. She brushed it off, like she said, and keeps it moving. And then the second phase, her marriages, failed relationships, failed marriages, Okay, she brushed that off. You know, I sacrificed, I gave the best of me to, to, to two men who uh, didn't appreciate it. And that's a hurtful thing, but she brushed it off, kept it moving, you know? So, and, and when she hear about the struggles of Abraham with his family, you know, that gives her solace in the fact that hers uh, and, and how to deal with hers. She listened to how he struggled in his relationships you know, two women that he loved. It gives her peace with, with in, in hers, you know. So, mashallah, Sister Jamila, may Allah bless you for sharing that with us. You know, sacrifice. That's what life is all about, guys. What sacrifices have we made for Allah? Allah created us to worship him. He put us here on this earth to be tested in that. The question is, what have you done for him lately? Subhanallah. Yeah, Dr. Asim. Uh, sometimes uh, if you don't uh, do a sacrifice, um, like when our body uh, is not healthy and somebody got uh, something that need to be removed, so they have to go to the uh, operation 
and to, to remove whatever is not functioning well. well. Um, like remove the leg, remove the hands, remove whatever. So any any limbs that is not uh, healthy should be removed. Otherwise, it's going to contaminate and spread the infection throughout our body. So um, when somebody uh, goes through uh, like a bad experience, marriage or whatever, or to be hired and to work sometimes for a company. And if it didn't work out for him, so he need to remove himself from that. Otherwise, this is going to ruin his life. So whatever happened to you, it's, uh, it is something good that you have learned from. You get a lesson and um, there is nothing to blame ourselves about because it's gone, it's done. Um, as, I, as I mentioned, when somebody has something in his body, so he need to remove this limb in order to remain healthy. So, and this is a kind of sacrifice. So you sacrifice with uh, your leg, your hands, whatever, in order to remain healthy for the rest of the body. Um, so this is something that we should think about and also, as Sister Leila mentioned, uh, life is not uh, going to be free from tests and trials and from hardship and difficulties. No, life is about hardship and difficulties and tests and trials. Nobody is free from that. Even if somebody um, try to show people that he's happy and he has this and this and this, the more they talk about their happiness, the more you feel that their heart is unhappy. So don't trust people, by the way. Don't trust people because the inner happiness and peace is from Allah, nothing else, nothing else. So if you have your heart with Allah, if you empty your heart from everything but Allah, and uh, the time you stand before Allah and you offer your prayer, and if you feel that your heart is with you, as we mentioned in the prayer before. So this is the true happiness that you can earn, you can gain, and you can live uh, during your life. Jazakallah khairan, Sister Jamila. Who's next? Yeah, so go ahead, Sister Fahme. Okay, um, so sac sacrificing for the sake of Allah, for me personally, um, I would say that the thing that I've sacrificed for a lot is my free time in my youth. Um, even though it was like a personal choice of mine to be married in my early 20s, and um, it was still something that I did for the sake of a lot because I knew at that stage in my life that's what I needed to do. Um, so after, you know, learning about the rulings of husbands and wife and the, what rights each person has and, and everything else here on the website, um, I have applied a lot of that teachings into my personal life. And the other day, I had some relatives who visited me from a different state. And one of my cousins, she had um, another person with her who, who was also living here in the state, but I didn't know who the person was. So um, she was surprised to have like never seen me anywhere in, I guess, the communities and gatherings and parties or whatever else they do nowadays. Um, so whether they're married or not, I mean, the people in their 20s, they do a, a lot of crazy things nowadays. But um, I was just like, you know, I, I don't, I, I, like, I prefer staying home. Like I take care of my business outside the house and I just come home and keep myself to keep myself at home. And she was like, oh, wow, that's so boring. And you know, you're too young for that. You should be out there and enjoying your life and this and that. And I was just like, this is me enjoying my life. Like I'm fulfilling my obligations to Allah and taking care of my kids and making my home um, a place of comfort. And this, like, I find this a sacrifice because it's so hard for especially people to not only do that, but to see like other people doing that, they they get really shocked about it. 
And so um, I just explained to her, this is this is like this is going to be something that I'll be held accountable for. Allah says that your home is your abode, and the Prophet also told us that like every shepherd or every responsible person will be asked about who or what they were responsible for. And in my case, it would be my home and my kids, of course. So I take this job very seriously, and other people who may be around the same age group or peers as I may not understand that because that's not what they do with their life. That's not what they chose to do. So to them, it's like they see it in a different shoe or whatnot. But anyways, yeah, um, I say this this would be a sacrifice for me. Yes, it is. SubhanAllah. Fame grew up on this website with some of the other young girls here. And some of look what the, the different directions they went in. Some of them went to college you know, to get there to work on college degrees. Other ones, you know, uh, went to an, uh, went to another route. She chose to get married, okay? Her and a couple others chose marriage because this is what was best for them at that time. You know, and a lot of people look at like, wow, you were so young. We had, you had dreams of going to college. Go to college, I will. But, you know, this is the sacrifice I'm gonna make. I'm not gonna do anything that's gonna compromise my relationship with Allah. You know, everyone is different. We all have our own strengths. We all have our own weaknesses. You know, some of us, you know, uh, marriage is best for at the time. Okay. And then we can continue with our college at a later date. For those who have other things under control, then they can go to college and get married later. So, you know, the sacrifices that we make depends on our, uh, on us as individuals, what our strengths are, what our weaknesses are, what my strength is may be a weakness for you. What your weakness is may be a strength for me. So uh, I really like how she brought this up. This was her sacrifice. She put college off. She put nursing school off on hold to uh, get married and to have children. SubhanAllah. Thank you for sharing that, Sister Femme. Dr. Asim. Yeah, the uh, sacrifice for a female started at uh, early time uh, during the uh, time of uh, pregnancy. So during this time, so look how much she sacrificed for her own, like, uh, newborn baby or the embryo. So um, this is really sacrifice because he took the the feed, the blood, the nutrients, everything from her bloodstream. So that's a kind of sacrifice. So when we talk about sacrifice, by the way, so um, what comes first to my mind is the motherhood, because this is really a start before even the delivery for her baby. So and after delivering the baby, so breastfeeding, and how much do they care, how much do they care for their kids. So yeah, it, it they, you know, they take out of their time, out of their comfort. Um, when they hear their baby screaming at night, so they wake up and start to, um, you know, see what is going on and uh, to, provide, to provide their kids their infants with, they, with what they need. So this is really uh, like uh, a life of sacrificing in different ways. And um, unfortunately, nowadays, uh, some like uh, mothers, they deliver the baby and after that, like, few months, they take him, they give him to the daycare, they give him somewhere, and they start to try to have to find how to manage between this and between their work. So this is not good for bringing uh, our generation or bringing a healthy kids, because the kids got their education, their um, the values, the moral, the akhlaq, the ethics from their mothers at early age. So, um, so and instead of keeping your, your, your son with you or your daughter, so they go and, you know, put them in the daycare or in whatever, and they ask for 
a babysitter. Uh, this is not good because we have seen that happened at different countries, wealthy countries, and it ended up that when they go home, they found their kids uh, worship fires because the uh, um, the the one who took care of their kids was a fire worshiper. So at that age, it's very critical. So um, this is a message for women, for ladies. When you have kids, you have to take care of your kids. Kids are a blessing from Allah, a name from Allah. Everybody is looking forward to have daughters and sons and many kids. When you got the kids, there is a responsibility. So open the Sunnah, the Quran, and try to find what is your rights and what is your duties, what is your responsibilities. Not to get the kids and then to throw them somewhere. So that's a kind of sacrifice. That's a kind of sacrifice. And because we don't raise the notion of sacrifice during our life, starting from early childhood with our kids, uh, some may suffer because of that. And then after that, they don't have this affiliation with their kids anymore. So um, thank you, Sister Femi, because you brought something very important. And uh, we have to, uh, not to think about it, but um, to live within the moral and the values of the sacrifice. Um, we are not here in this life to enjoy and to have fun. I, I saw sometimes some uh, ladies um, they go for parties in order to have fun and they leave their kids somewhere else with a uh, um, babysitter and they don't know what is going on. And we heard about some uh, crimes and some of them, they were murdered because of that. So be careful of this because you never know what has happened to your kids. They may, may become, uh, God forbidden, homosexual because they leave them with somebody that uh, they don't know about. So this is very serious issue, very serious issue. The best job and the most important job for female is to raise kids. And that's a kind of sacrifice. Thank you. Yes. Who's next? Very well said, Dr. Asim. Yes, Sister Anissa, go ahead. Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah. I think this is a real good time to bring in as a child when I would get a cold or just a cold mainly because I didn't, I wasn't having illnesses other than the chicken pox. I remember those. My uh, stepdaughter told me this morning, not stepdaughter, my daughter, told me this morning that a little girl has chicken pox. And it just set me into a whole different mode of having her teach this child now. This is her test from a lot. Teach her to talk to Allah and ask Allah to heal her because Allah is the greatest physician. I use some of the prophets like uh, Jonah, if I get in trouble, or any of the prophets that have gone on before me that, have, that has had an illness. I look to see what they did. Number one, they had patience. They had patience with that illness and waited on Allah to heal them. But while they were waiting on Allah, they talked to Allah. They repented to Allah. They let Allah know, I know I got this. If something happened to me that I caused this, please forgive me because I don't want this. We as children get tests. This is the time to teach our children how to talk to Allah, to get rid of your illnesses, to let you let yourself know that Allah is the one that we turn to for everything. And believe me, the Christians do this. They do this with their children. They throw Jesus in their face all the time. We need to be throwing the correct prophets to the Islam in our faces, in our children's faces, when we have a problem. So my illness is right now is side and nerve, and I'm having to have patience because can't nobody give me a shot until July the 27th. And I'm walking like an old woman bent over. So can Allah, but Allah is getting me through. 
So I just want to kind of remind us there, we need to see a lot. We need to go to a lot. We need to understand. We can tell a lot anything. Get that relationship with the last one ago. So count on Alhamdulillah. Yeah, mashallah. Exactly. Uh, you know, this is one of the things that's supposed to uh, distinguish us from the unbelievers is when we are faced with calamities or hardships in life, you know, we don't sit around complaining and whining about it. We turn to a law for help. We turn to a law for guidance. We turn to a law, you know, uh, for treatment and all of that. And a law says, you know, uh, take the treatment when he does uh, uh, send it. And uh, and we he, he emphasizes over and over and over again, patience in the Quran. You know, so this is like she said, something that we need to get back to teaching our children to not complain so much you know, and whine so much, you know, uh, to learn patience and to ponder the prophets who came before us, you know, the pain that they went through, the sicknesses they went through and how they handled it with dignity and patience. You know, mashallah, Dr. Asim, you have any comments on that? Um, we, uh, we got to remember all the time when we have any difficulties, um, like uh, such as uh, when we have any disease. Um, and this is something we get used uh, to it. Like uh, nobody lives without any disease, like uh, like a cold, a flu, a headache, or whatever. Um, during that time, if we don't follow a certain procedures, Allah Akbar, Allah Akbar. So, um, like uh, we have to set the priorities in our life uh, for example when we hear the call for prayer so we stop talking we stop everything even if you recite the holy quran so the priority now is to listen to it and repeat after the uh, um so when we look at sacrifice setting set up the priority for your life so if somebody got any illness or disease if they don't think about the priority at this time is to eat this and to stop that and uh, i'm not allowed to do this i'm not allowed to do this if we don't follow a certain way of life for like a week or a couple of weeks you will not be able to get uh, recovery or to 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 to, to heal yourself um even if you have a cut in your leg or your hand so we have to care about it and not to let the water to come most often so um i would say sir, following a certain way of life when we are sick this is a kind of sacrifice because you give up the um, the normal life the life that you like, the way that you have been, you know, um, eating and drinking and going out and enjoy your life. And so um, controlling our desire is the way of success. Put it in such a way. If we don't control our desire, um, we will not be successful in our life. And this is for dunya, for your life. For your career and for also your dean in the hereafter. Um, so, Sister Anisa, mashallah, she uh, reflect upon uh, when somebody face any disease or sick, um, the way they should think about it should be uh, following a certain way in order to re be recovered. Thank you. And going to the next person. Yes, Sister. Um Elma, go ahead. Hey, uh, I wrote a couple of paragraphs here. <laughs> uh, hopefully it will make sense. Uh, so as a young teen, I chose to submit completely to Allah, to the best of my ability, not just, not just partially. I didn't look for boyfriends as my relatives and peers did. Instead, when I was approached by a boy, I would say I am a Muslim, first of all, and I won't disrespect my parents by going behind their back. I sacrificed being the same as others and being invited in their groups and the short enjoyments of this world, and inst instead chose to submit to Allah and earn his pleasure. 
I sacrificed displaying my beauty and going to haram celebrations where men, women would dance to music, looking at each other, touching hands, being lost in the deceiving enjoyments of this world. I didn't go to the part of my sister's wedding that were haram and the celebration of my brother's circumcision because I was seeking Allah's pleasure and not the acceptance of people. I earned my family's displeasure because of my decisions. I went against everything that my family and relatives knew and were accustomed to. Everything that was embedded in our culture and that Allah forbade, I did not practice it. And I was met with criticism, argumentation and rude comments. So I sacrificed the acceptance of people and hopefully I earned the pleasure of Allah. For many years, I suffered in silence because of my guardians, be they parents, husband or husband, they did not seek knowledge and they didn't understand me or my Islamic practices. So I sacrificed my peace and remained patient and patient until Allah made a way out for me. And now I'm divorced and independent and free from being oppressed by anyone. That's all. Alhamdulillah, mashallah, this is pretty good, Elma. Uh, and this is hard growing up, you know, in this day and age, you know, so we're Muslim, we come from Muslim countries, the sister Elma is Albanian, but subhanAllah, you know, people are deviating so far away from practicing Islam like they should. You know, everybody has girlfriends, everybody has boyfriends. So this is a big sacrifice to maintain your deen, to hold on to the rope of Islam when everyone around you is not. You know, that's one of the ultimate sacrifices, you know, and look how many people sell their soul, you know, just to be like everyone else. Yes, go ahead, Dr. Asim. Uh, SubhanAllah, for teenagers and for youth, I believe, they won't be successful in their life without uh, living the meaning and the practice of uh, sacrifice. Uh, this is something um, has to be thought about because we are occupied by dunya, by worldly desire. And uh, here in the, like in the West, we are surrounded by non-believers. Uh, they live in a different way following the devil way. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to make it very clear. So you follow Allah Taala and his messenger. And if you don't follow that, you are in the devil way. There is no in between. So whether you as Prophet Ibrahim, uh, he had to choose between loyalty to his family or loyalty to his Lord Allah. So um, to choose between the love of himself and the love of Allah. Uh, to choose between the uh, like um, the uh, his uh, family and his tie to his uh, the kids. And this is uh, like the only son that he got after being aged. So he would say, oh, this is my only son. How come I do that? So in our life for the teenager, we have to bring this concept to our life. So we have to choose between loyalty to the community, to the culture, to the friends, to the school, or loyalty to Allah. Between the love of Allah and the love of my desire is to go out and enjoy and to do this and to do that and to have fun and to get high. Um, between uh, Tawheed and Shirk, between um, like the, uh, like to prove that you testify that there is no true God Allah and you single out Allah in everything in your life. And the other way is to associate Allah with some, like some other thing, like devil issue and uh, to go in the devil way. And then there is no way to protect yourself if you got into that uh, trap. So, um, Alhamdulillah, um, listening to the story of Ibrahim alayhi salam with his son Ismail and learning the concept, the true concept of sacrifice is not only to slaughter a lamb and to, be, to get heavy. One day every year, to slaughter a lamb and then oh i did the slaughter a lamb so i'm happy now 
No, you have to practice this every day. Every day, you never know when are we going to die. It may be today, it may be tomorrow, nobody knows. So we should die on the sake of Allah, like um, on La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah, uh, on the true testimony, like the testimony of faith. So in order to protect the testimony of faith, so now you will learn that the concept of sacrifice is highly important in Islam and you have to raise the notion of sacrifice and when you come in between something so you got to choose what please Allah not to please people because if you please that's a hadith one of the hadith of Prophet if you please the community the friends the family and displeasing Allah Taala, Allah will be angry with you Allah will be displeased and then later on everybody will be displeased with you but if you please Allah Allah will be pleased with you and Allah will make people pleased with was what you are doing even if you are uh, doing something different but they will respect you they will respect you and there are many lessons about that so for teenagers and for youth when it comes to to choose between something to please Allah and something to displease Allah it choose what please Allah it choose the scarf it choose the place that you go without any violation no like uh, wine not this not that so this is something has to be not thought about but to act accordingly because nobody knows what is going to happen in our life and every time if you give up that's another hadith if you give up something for the sake of allah allah will bring you more things that will be beloved to your heart so when you give up something for the sake of allah allah will give you something better one better than what you have left what you have give up think about it again when you give up something for the sake of allah this will be replaced with something more beloved to your heart and more important than the thing that you um refrain from or you give it away and i see people are around so inshallah would like to listen to the share. Um, are there is there anyone else who would like to share any sacrifices they've made with us? Because I don't see any other hands up. Is that it? I think that's it, Doctor. I some other others that just joined or just listening. Yeah. They don't have something to share. No. I don't okay. Think so. I think so. Inshallah, um, we come to the end of this uh, conversation, but. Uh, I am sure we have more things to be shared. We have things that we can learn from each other. So life is about sacrifice. You set up the priority in our life. And the first priority is what please Allah. What please Allah. So subhanak Allahumma bihamdik nashhadu an la ilaha illa anta nastaghfiruka wa natubu ilayk. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والعصر إن الإنسان لفي خسر إلا الذين آمنوا وعملوا الصالحات وتواصوا بالحق وتواصوا بالصبر سبحان ربك رب العزة عما يصفون وسلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله